He's been around for over 50 years, but he still has a few secrets hidden away under his not actually made of iron armor. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 Iron Man facts. What do you want from me? What do we want from you? No, uh, uh What do you want from me? You have become a problem, a problem I have to deal with. For this list, we are putting the focus on more real world facts as opposed to looking at specific plot points that occurred in the comics or films. Number 10, Stan Lee didn't write his first appearance. After creating several successful comic book series, Lee decided that he wanted to try to create a character that would be difficult for audiences to relate to, but make him so interesting that audiences would love him anyway. He chose to create the quintessential capitalist in Tony Stark slash Iron Man. What you might not know, however, is that Lee didn't actually write the original story in Tales of Suspense number 39. He handed over the duties to Larry Lieber, Don Heck, and of course Jack Kirby, who all played important roles in the creation of the character. I am Iron Man. Number 9. 17 Years of Production Iron Man first hit the big screen in 2008, but Universal Studios had actually purchased the rights to the character back in April 1990. 20th Century Fox eventually acquired the rights in the late 90s and considered casting Nicolas Cage or Tom Cruise in the leading role. Any questions? Yeah. Can we get a cappuccino machine in here? Because I don't know what you call this. Although several screenplays were written, no film was ever made. New Line Cinema bought the rights, but couldn't get a film put together, and eventually returned the rights to Marvel, who teamed up with Paramount Pictures. After 17 long years of production, they finally released the film that made the Marvel Cinematic Universe possible. Number 8. Large Female Fan Base You ever lose an hour of sleep your whole life? Be prepared to lose a few with you. It's no secret that Tony Stark is a ladies man, but the character's popularity with women goes beyond the comic book pages. According to Stan Lee, Iron Man was one of the first superheroes to gain a significant following with female readers, and these readers were responsible for most of the character's fan mail received by Marvel. Whether it's the money, the charm, or the do what I want attitude, it's pretty clear that Tony Stark is successful with the ladies, both fictional and non-fictional. <laughs> Number 7. Fourth richest fictional character according to Forbes. Big man in a suit of armor. Take that off, what are you? Genius billionaire playboy philanthropist. Anyone who's watched the films or read the comics knows that Tony Stark is incredibly wealthy, but how does he rank according to other fictional billionaires? In 2013, Forbes magazine answered that question by releasing their Fictional 15, which listed the 15 richest fictional characters. Visionary. Genius. American Patriot. They estimated that Stark was worth $12.4 billion, which was fourth behind Carlisle Cullen, Smaug the Dragon, and Scrooge McDuck. I love to dive around in it like a porpoise, and burrow through it like a gopher, and toss it up and let it hit me on the head. He did claim the title as the wealthiest superhero, however, with over $3 billion more than Bruce Wayne. Number six, created as an anti-communist hero. He says uh, for you to start working immediately, and when you're done, it will set you free. No, he won't. No, he won't. Like it or not, comic books are and always have been political. Iron Man was first introduced in 1963 in the middle of the Cold War between the United States and the Soviet Union. If we don't stop him, we must stop him. It's time to iron things out. While Stan Lee has admitted that he wanted to create a character that would be difficult for fans to like at first, the character also served as an anti-communist hero. In Tales of Suspense number 39, Stark is captured by the Vietnamese tyrant Wong Chu. He is able to build a suit and escape, however, killing numerous communists along the way. Number 5. He wasn't always a popular character. And what do you say to your other nickname, the Merchant of Death? That's not bad. 
Ask anyone today who their favorite Avenger is, and odds are pretty good that they're gonna say Iron Man. Robert Downey Jr. has made Iron Man the central figure of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and he's almost universally loved by fans. I have successfully privatized world peace. <laughs> Believe it or not though, because the character acted as a direct contradiction to almost every other superhero, Marvel had trouble developing a fan base for Iron Man. Add in the fact that he was a weapon salesman during a time that many Americans were tired of war, and it's pretty easy to see how Stark was initially not so popular. You have a lot of nerve showing up here tonight. Can I at least get a reaction from you? Panic. I would say panic is my... I was referring to your company's involvement in this latest atrocity. Yeah, they just put my name on the imitation. I don't know what to tell you. Number four. An Iron Man comic got Robert Downey Jr. suspended from school. Iron Man, that's kind of catchy. It's got a nice ring to it. I mean, it's not technically accurate. This it's a gold titanium alloy. But it's kind of evocative, the imagery, anyway. Downey is well known for the bad boy antics that landed him in trouble early in his career. One of the most ironic stories, however, is how an Iron Man comic landed Downey a one-day suspension from school. Tony, what are you doing back there? What is that? Put that back. Put it back where you got it from. Where's your mother? Maria! Come on, go, 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 go. In 1981, at the age of 16, he stole a comic from one of his classmates and tore it to pieces. Allegedly, he called the student a nerd for reading the comic. NERD! That comic just so happened to be an issue of the Invincible Iron Man. If only he had known then that Iron Man would soon become the most iconic role of his career. Nice work, kid. Number three, he founded the Avengers. What have I to fear? The Avengers. That's what we call ourselves, sort of like a team. Earth's Mightiest Heroes type thing. Perhaps making up for the fact that he was unable to write the first issue featuring Iron Man, Stan Lee included him in the first issue of The Avengers as the founding member of the team. Maybe your army comes, and maybe it's too much for us, but it's all on you. Because if we can't protect the Earth, you can be damn well sure we'll avenge it. In the issue, Loki manipulates the Hulk into causing severe destruction, resulting in Iron Man, Ant-Man, Wasp, and Thor all attempting to stop him. They would eventually join together and call themselves The Avengers, with Iron Man assuming the lead position. He would also eventually step down in later issues, allowing Captain America to take over. He got the lightning. Light the bastards up. You and me, we stay here on the ground. We keep the fighting here. And Hulk. <sighs> Smash. Number two, Disney nixed a movie about Stark's alcoholism. Not I need you to it. do it. I am Pepper, trying to do you're it. You're not listening to no, me. I'm trying to make you CEO. Why won't you let me? Have you been drinking? The films do an excellent job portraying a lot of things about Tony Stark's character, but one of the things they've so far skipped over is his battle with alcoholism. It's time to go to bed. It's time. You know, You're not going to be happy. Come on, you know you want to. Just keep the suit. I know, it has a filtration yeah, system. You could drink that water. Although this was hinted at in Iron Man 2 and 3, it hasn't been explored anywhere near as thoroughly as in the comics. She's right. The party's over. Then again, the party was over for me like an hour and a half ago. The after party starts... In 15 minutes! In fact, there were talks about adapting the Demon in a Bottle storyline for Iron Man 3, planning to connect it to the PTSD Stark would have after the New York incident. Unfortunately, and I'm sure you saw this coming, Disney nixed the idea because of the large number of children who are fans of the Marvel films. Hey, Yehaw. your heart doctor, she's going to need a cardiologist after I... Before we unveil our number one pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Hello, I am Jarvis. You are Altron, a global peacekeeping initiative designed by Mr. Stark. Our sentience integration trials have been unsuccessful, so I'm not certain what triggered you. Where's my... where's your body? I am a program. I am without form. Oh, Powered reduced to 19%. The render is complete. Yeah, I like it fabricated. Paint it. Commencing automated assembly. Estimated completion time is five hours. Number one, Tony Stark is based on Howard Hughes. Jesus Christ, son, Howard. <laughs> Howard, let me give you a little advice, huh? Why don't you take your oil money, drill bits, take, all right, take your drill bit yeah. money, and why don't you put it in the bank? Howard Hughes was a multi-billionaire ladies' man who Stan Lee described as one of the most colorful men of our time. As such, it isn't hard to see where Lee found his inspiration for Tony Stark. Lee admits that he based Stark on Hughes, although he had to tone down several of Hughes' mental instabilities, such as his OCD. That milk is bad. I shouldn't pick up the bottle of milk with my right hand. 
Instead, he gave Stark a severe addiction to alcohol, which has affected the character at various points throughout the series. I'm sorry, I don't want to get off on the wrong foot. Do I look at the patch or the eye? Yeah. Honestly, I'm a bit hungover. I'm not sure if you're real or if, if I'm having to do I am very real. Do you agree with our list? Where's Iron Man? What? Put Iron Man back on. Who's messing with the Where remote? What's your favorite Iron Man fact? Just stick to the official statement and soon this will all be behind you. For more great top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to watchmojo.com.